Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here. Back, back to the Blue Wall, back from Asia. Um, another frantic, madcap, but also beautiful tour um, to Japan and South Korea. Always feel very fortunate to be able to see these places um, around the world. Incredible people, um, yeah, incredible locations. Um, oh, probably can't even tell on camera. Wearing my Son t-shirt, Nos7, seven, Nos7. Seven. Um, went to his uh, boutique designer shop in um, Gangnam, in um, Seoul, and... Uh, Actually, very reasonably priced. <laughs> that is 30 quid. Um, I kind of walked in expecting, okay, you're not going to be able to buy anything in this shop. Um, and I was like, oh, actually, that's very, very affordable. So, uh, yeah, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't an advert for uh, Son Shop. I'm, I'm sure if you are there, go and have a look at it. It's a very nice kind of little place. Um, but I just thought, you know what, I saw that. I think it was Ben Davies put on his Instagram or something. All the players and everyone got gifted um, Noz 7 stuff um, when they arrived at the hotel, I think. And I just thought, oh, I'm going to miss out. I'm now going to go and see if there's anything. And I, yeah, I did walk in with trepidation thinking, ooh, this looks very smart in here. Um, and I was like, well, that's actually quite a nice t-shirt. So yeah, so it has his, uh, obviously the letters of his name backwards with the seven. And also it has like a motto, uh, nothing, ordinary Sunday is the um, the brand name for it. Or motto, or motto. Brand slo slogan is probably the best word, but uh, Son's everywhere in Seoul, honestly. Um, couldn't walk really a couple of streets without seeing him on some kind of advert, whether it's for Samsung, side of a bank. There's this cool bit, um, I can't remember what the bank's called now, maybe Hanna or something, something like that. Hanza, I can't remember the exact name is. But yeah, it's this whole kind of bank that's got a massive image of Son projected on it. Um, and the walls around have got other images of him. It's very, very cool. Um, he's got coffee shops as well. I'm sure there's adverts for coffee shops. When you come to the airport, Incheon International Airport, all the trolleys have got someone's face in them. It's very cool. Um, they just love him so much. And, uh, you know, I think he is just a bit of a beloved character around the world now, Sonny. And it's not just his talent, though. No. I think it's his kind of personality, his character. Speaking to people out in, in Korea, just this... Just, he just see him as an ambassador for the country. So, yes, yeah, so I thought I'd get my own uh, Sony T-shirt because it was quite a nice one as well. And, uh, yeah, but uh, great time. It was, um, like I say, they're always frantic. Um, my wife always jokes that they're holidays. I mean, there's very little kind of time to see the place, especially Tokyo. I felt Tokyo, I think I might have maybe said this in the last video, I had so little time to look around. There was so many kind of... It was the shorter period of time in Tokyo, and it was just trying to get to various events, press conferences, the match, player interviews, things like that. And look, look hey, I'm not saying woe is me or anything like this. I'm getting, you know, paid to go and, and uh, cover all these things in amazing locations. Absolutely not. But I just feel like it's a place I'm definitely going to have to go back on holiday and see some of. Uh, Seoul, obviously been there twice now. It's an amazing place and fortunate enough to see quite a bit of it last time. So this time there was less pressure on me to get around and see it. Although I did see probably a fair bit because it's nice when the player interviews are done in places that you'd like to go to anyway. And a couple of them were. Um, but yeah, car, the frenzy, the, the love for Son in Korea is just incredible. 2,000 fans at the airport meeting him as he came in and the team, of course. 25,000 to open training um, and the two matches were both sellouts with I think it was 62,000 plus at them he's just yeah it's incredible it was uh but yeah it was again a great tour in terms of access um loads of interviews strange dynamic this time in terms of the media normally on these tours there's a, a quite a, a biggish group of journalists maybe five or six English media will go this time it was very different, I think probably because of the Euros or a lot of journalists who then kind of quite understandably didn't want to then leave their families after a month or so to then head on to a two week tour. So there's very few people there. It was myself, the legendary Sung Mo Lee, the Korean journalist, football journalist, and um, Seb Stafford Bloor from The Athletic, who's a lovely chap as well. This was, uh, I think, his first tour. Um, so he was just doing kind of bits and pieces for the athletic um doing little um kind of uh the odd little uh, not, not little odd kind of long read piece and things like that which kind of left me in this strange position of 
probably the bulk of the stuff from the tour was, was more what I needed um, and things like that. So I was in this strange kind of, uh, certainly with the interviews where I'm kind of used to as part of a pack, you just ask a couple of questions and everyone gets a couple and that's the way it goes. Whereas on this tour, I kind of very much felt like I was uh, kind of doing like leading interviews, doing the bulk of the interviews and, and the other guys would kind of take what they needed from it. Um, which, yeah, was a, a different dynamic. Um, not a bad one, because obviously I got to kind of get a lot of what I wanted out of the interviews. Um, and hopefully they did too. But yeah, I spoke to so many people. Spoke to, who do I have a chat with? Archie Gray, Lucas Bergwell, Dayan Kulusevsky, Jamie Donnelly, Brandon Austin, uh, Guillermo Vicario, Destiny Doggy, Ozzy Hardilis, Ledley King. Got to watch them doing a taste challenge, which was interesting, and then spoke to them both. Uh, we had press conferences where we could speak to James Madison, Sonny, of course, Ben Davies, um, and of course, um, um, and across six different press conferences and a 40 minute sit down with him, which was brilliant. Um, you know what a great communicator he is and how well he can kind of say what he needs to say, really. Um, and yeah, it was. 40 minutes in the company of Andrew Postcoglu, you're going to get a lot of information and you're going to get a lot of interesting stuff. For a guy who will continuously tell you that he's not very good at small talk, if you're going to sit down and you have a load of questions to ask him, brilliant, honestly, just for 40 minutes, just the stuff he can come out with and the insight you get. Um, so yeah, loads of interviews. I think some of them are available to view online. Sungmo was doing some filming so I think a few of them are on YouTube. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Grey Bergvall, Decky, Vicario and Doggy, I think will be up. Maybe Aussie Ideas as well. Ledley's still to be done. I've still got to uh, write up um, a Ledley one. And there's also one more bit of the and sit down to come, uh, which is to go out. If you get a chance, honestly, have a read of... Um, I mean, all of them are really interesting interviews. Nothing to do with me. The, the players were just fascinating. Um, really good insights. I think every single interview, none of them I walked away from thinking, ooh, what am I going to stitch together from that? Sometimes, you know, when you get a bit of a dud interview and they don't want to say too much or they're a bit nervous, um, not because of me, just because they, you know, maybe don't like interviews or they're young and they're not used to it. Sometimes you have to stitch together answers a little bit to create some kind of flow to it. Whereas it didn't have that at all. Everyone spoke really well and, and kind of had a story to tell. And that's what I always, hopefully, you might have noticed my pieces. I don't want to be the flowery type writing loads of stuff around them. I want them to tell their story. Um, and we got loads, you know, lots of really nice kind of feedback on the things that, kind of the interviews that were coming out. So if you get a chance to read them, and honestly, the, um, yeah, the and sit down most of that's gone. I did a long read that's gone out today. Look on my uh, Twitter account, social media accounts. It, it's all on there. You can go and read it all. Um, it, it wasn't filmed. It's, it's not why a sit down works. It's, I think if you film to sit down, it's less laid back and comfortable, and it probably feels more like they're doing a press conference. Whereas this way, it was just three of us with Anne sat around a little table and just chatting away. And uh, yeah, the long read I put out today for me was one of. Yeah, probably the more interesting pieces of the tour, just some of the stuff he was going into it was just fantastic about his past, his future, um, just the way life kind of is intertwined with his work. Um, I asked him just whether he believes in fate and destiny because, you know, he used to, he, he worked in a bank. He hired up, uh, hung up his boots and worked in a bank. And here he is in charge of a Premier League club. Um, and there was a lovely little story about his uh, meeting with, in the uh, in a car park, just bumped into the CEO of the A League in Australia when he was really kind of out of work after the whole. You might remember the the bust up with Craig Foster on TV, where he went out of work then for a good twelve fourteen months or so, and he just bumped into the director, the CEO of the A League, who in those days the A League would kind of recommend managers to clubs if they had an opening. So Ange bumps into him in the car park. Um, kind of gets himself back into his mind within two days a job opens up at Brisbane Raw and the rest of history and it's just yeah we had a fascinating chat about destiny and fate or whether you just work towards your own kind of luck as it were in the world uh, so we went kind of that deep side but we also got into loads of good football stuff like Jed Spence transfer stuff striker stuff 
Um, yeah, I mean, I've got various answers in all of this I'm going to talk to you about as well. So there's plenty I will cover in this, but there's plenty also to go and then read. Um, yeah, it was quite funny as we were I've seen all of Ange over the last year, it's fair to say. And as we he, we were kind of finishing up the sit down and he was saying like, nice to meet you to, to Sungmo and Seb because he hadn't actually met either of them before. Yeah, he kind of turned to me and he said, uh, what did he say exactly? He said something about, uh, and I'll see you across the season. And, uh, and then he goes, I was a bit disappointed when I went on holiday, you weren't there. <laughs> Which was like, I don't know whether it was to take it as a compliment or he was saying, Gold, you're a stalker. You're everywhere. Because obviously I was in Melbourne as well for that madcap 48 hours. Um, yeah, I just said to him, I have limitations. I'm not going to follow you on a holiday. I'm absolutely not. I don't know if it's a theme or not. Because Vicario said, when he saw me, he goes, you get around the world, don't you? And I was like, I'm not stalking you. I'm not. I'm getting sent to do these things. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, he's used to seeing my face. Um, is Ange Postacoglu. Um but yeah, I don't think he was really disappointed that he went on holiday and wasn't there. He was probably absolutely relieved that I was not there. Okay.